uh, we lost our friend. We don't know where he had gone. And we were kind of worried that he something happened to him. Where's the last spot you saw him at? We all went to bed last night, and when we woke up, he was not here, and we've been looking for him all day. We were trying to find the park ranger or we, their offices or anything. Do you know if he took any personal items with him? We searched his tent, and everything is still there. He even left his phone in his wallet. We might be afraid that he might have hurt himself, but we're, we're, we're really not sure. This is a bizarre story to say the least and i wanted to give you like a quick synopsis and then we'll go over all the details enrique romain martinez he was 21 years old he was this human resource specialist in the military and he goes on this camping trip with seven other soldiers okay to north carolina in this place called cape lookout in the southern outer banks and so they go to this trip on May 22nd, 2020, Memorial Day weekend. They get there on a Friday night. And according to one of the soldiers, the next morning at 8.30 on a Saturday, May 23rd, they wake up and Enrique is gone, but his stuff is in the tent. They call 911 at 7 p.m. that day on Saturday to report Enrique missing. And during that 911 call, if you remember, he claims that they could not find any rangers and th that they were looking but they didn't see any we were trying to find the park ranger or we, their offices or anything however that wasn't true when we woke up he was not here and we've been looking for him all day we were trying to find the park ranger or we, their offices or anything tow ring confirms two rangers in uniform and marked vehicles made contact with the group between one and two saturday afternoon asking them to move their illegally parked vehicles and at no point during that interaction uh, did anybody from the group mention uh, a missing person about a week later okay enrique's head just his head washes up on the shore not too far from the campsite his body has, to this day, never been found. It was just his severed head. Now, we're going to go into this Rolling Stone article, but on the phone call where the guy was like, you know, I think he maybe hurt himself. We don't know. And at one point, they these people said that he might have had that kind of tendency. His family said that's not true at all. Army specialist Alex Becerra, who, according to multiple sources, planned and organized the camping trip to the North Carolina seashore, that preceded Romain Martinez's disappearance and death has been charged with conspiracy. Dereliction of duty, two counts of making false official statements, three counts of disobeying a superior officer, and wrongful possession, use, or distribution of a controlled substance, but not murder or manslaughter. The next portion is what we've covered already. This was Memorial Day weekend 2020. The mysterious events, which remain completely unexplained, began when a group of seven soldiers plus Roman Martinez defied pandemic lockdown order roll my eyes to go on a camping trip to camp lookout national seashore friday night it rained heavily which some people were talking about but why would they go with this all this bad weather the next day around 7 p.m a group of soldiers reported rowan martinez missing but sarah was the one who spoke on 911. we lost our friend when we woke up he was not there we've been looking for him all day we were trying to find a park ranger or their offices or anything which contradicts what the park ranger said because they were like hey we saw you that day we told you to move your vehicle because you were parked in an illegal area by i think some sand dunes and you never mentioned at all your missing friend basera the guy that called 911 volunteered un unpromptedly this information that hey you know what enrique might have taken his own life we might be afraid he might have hurt himself, he told dispatcher. He wasn't diagnosed, but he did have tendencies. Enrique's sister just says that's just not true, that Enrique had all these plans in life. He never had these kind of tendencies before. Just completely false. May 29th is when the severed head washes up shore. This is the Shackford Banks, not far from the soldier's campsite. The medical examiner determined that the cause of death was likely homicide, and the body was never found. 19 months went by with no apparent developments in the case. The seven soldiers who were on the camping trip claimed Roman Martinez simply walked off in the middle of the night, never to be seen again. And agents with the Army's Criminal Investigation Division, or CID, couldn't seem to get any more information out of them. CID has told me they're quite confident it's murder by one or more of the seven soldiers. What do they have? Some sort of like pact that they can't tell anybody? They're just between each other. How do they do that? Says Dustin Collier, 
an attorney representing the Roman Martinez family pro bono. They told me while they don't have enough to charge for homicide, they have ample for lesser offenses that they could use to leverage people at a flip. The army has docketed a raft of charges against Basiera, but they declined to provide their charge sheet. Also, when Basiera was reached by phone, he declined to comment. He says, I have plenty to say, he told the Rolling Stone, but I prefer not to say anything at this time. He gave no indication of how he intends to plead at his arraignment scheduled for January 20th coming up. Christian Romero, which is a friend of Enrique, had this to say, and he joined around the same time that Enrique joined the army. And he says he can't understand why Basira planned a camping trip at the time when the weather was so foul. It was raining nonstop. The ferry was closed. The tents blew over. Enrique just wanted to go home. That's why he walked away in the middle of the night. This is according to what Romero had to say. He heard from soldiers who were on the camping trip. They told the same story to authorities who related to Gracielda, which is um, Enrique's family member. But the group of seven also told investigators that Enrique had left his wallet, phone and glasses behind in the tent, which Gracielda said is very unlikely. Her baby brother, whom she always took care of, could barely see without his pair of thick glasses. She says that he would have never left them behind voluntarily. There's some other really interesting bits of information, okay? Collier says that shortly after calling 911, a group of soldiers alerted their unit, the 37th Brigade Engineer Battalion of the 82nd Airborne Division, but that their battalion commander, Lieutenant Colonel Scotty Otten, waited until Monday morning to inform CID, which delayed until the following Friday to secure Romain Martinez's barracks as a crime scene. By that time, Collier says that he had been missing for almost a full week. According to Collier, who's had multiple briefings with the CID task force investigating the case, one of seven campers entered Romain Martinez's room before it was locked down. What was in there, right? What did they take out? Gracielda, the sister, says that her brother, a sensitive young man who was into Buddhism and had crystals, kept the daily journal and it has not been found. Attempts to reach Auden by phone were unsuccessful. So there's a lot of back and forth going on here, right? Okay, in August 2021, CID increased the reward money, $50,000, the largest sum the Army has ever offered, but CID's press release included a strange statement that seemed to backhandedly push the theory that Romain Martinez, Enrique, had been decapitated by a boat propeller strike. CID urged members of the public to come forward if you were operating a boat in the area and recall possibly hitting something in the water, come forward. Gracielda calls it the stupidest statement I've ever read because the medical examiner in the autopsy report had specifically ruled out the possibility of a propeller strike or a shark attack as the cause of the jagged chop injuries to her brother's head and neck, which left his jaw broken in two places. Also, she says there's no way he would have gone swimming in the dead of night during a thunderstorm far out to see where powered watercraft operate. They're trying to deter this investigation from a homicidal one to an accidental one, she says. And in my opinion, they look ridiculous and incompetent. This kind of goes on to say that there's just no known theory or motive why any of these soldiers would have wanted to do anything to him. There's just no theory. There's no like anything that they could find to date. There's not even a plausible theory why anyone would have wanted to murder such a thoroughly nice guy, much less viciously decapitate him. By all accounts, Romain Martinez had no disputes with anyone, though he was airborne qualified. He was a non-combat support soldier an HR specialist who sat in front of a computer all day long. He was a hippie, Gracielda said, into nature and spirituality, a strong believer in women's rights, staunchly supportive of his female friends. He was just a few months from getting out of the army and he had plans to buy a new car, take a trip to Japan and go to college on the GI Bill. He would never hurt another person, she says, wiping her tears. Nothing justifies the way they murdered him. There's another portion of this article that is super interesting. This was one of the more detailed articles that I was able to find online was the Rolling Stone. And so they go on to talk about LSD. OK, might have played some role in whatever went down on Memorial Day weekend. Gracielda says her brother was an enthusiastic proponent of hallucinogenic mushrooms, which I've tried mushrooms. I've tried LSD, not the best experience, which he believed held the cure for mental illness. Romero says, Christian, the friend, that Romain Martinez Enrique also took LSD and that Bessiera was allegedly known around the barracks to be a small time dealer of acid tabs. The substance charge against Basiera, which could be for simple possession or a more serious accusation of distribution, shows that the military prosecutors suspect him of some kind of narcotics offense. The detail might be a red herring. Kids in their early 20s go on camping trips, get drunk and trip on psychedelics all the time. But Enrique's 
death took place amid a surge in substance crime on Fort Bragg with multiple with apparent links to the use and distribution of narcotics on post. And there are a few other clues in his killing, which was just one of a massive wave of fatalities at the Fort Bragg over the past two years, including repeated instances of fratricidal soldier on soldier instances and literally dozens of deaths for which there is no explanation at all. The article goes to give on some other pretty crazy examples and stories, which maybe we'll cover on a live stream. But the charges that Bassiera is currently being charged with is charges of conspiracy, three counts of disobeying a superior officer, failure to obey an order, two counts of making false statements and wrongful use, possession or manufacturing of substances. It's safe to assume that there were hundreds of vehicles and thousands of visitors out on the, the island uh, you know, over the course of that weekend. The geography of these islands makes it difficult for somebody to get lost for an extended period of time uh, without some other existing problems. Begging their mothers make their children speak <laughs> because it's unbearable to not know what happened to her son. Give me some of your thoughts down below in the comment section. I appreciate you watching. Please hit the like button, the subscriber and turn the bell with notifications. I was kind of a little rushy. I got a bunch of things I'm trying to do, but I still want to squeeze and some content for you guys, even when I got these other things behind the scenes, I may be coming back later today. Um, weird, weird. This is definitely planting the seed for me. I consider this planting a seed. We'll see where this goes. Uh, hopefully we can get a little bit of attention on this story. It's just, just weird, weird. Take care of yourselves. Peace.